Mr. Nick Clegg. Nick Clegg has to work very hard to make sure that the government has not sent any more Darfuris back to Sudan. As the leader of the Liberal Democrats, I will ask that he will continue to work hard, not just to pro protect my people in Darfur or Sudan, also to help Darfuris to rebuild their lives in the UK. I decided to join the Liberal Democrat about a few months ago. They are only a party who are talking about the Darfuris, also they also they try to help the Darfuris. Thank you very much. There's something which I think I certainly hold very dear, which is that we have a long culture and tradition in this country which places great emphasis on our, on our international obligations and that regards the whole issue of asylum as something which, beyond and above everything else, is governed by international treaties and by a, and by a sense of moral duty. And what I find so bizarre is that what has happened over the last 10 years, not bizarre, so distressing, is that those simple pillars of the way we deal with asylum seekers, that we do it in accordance with clear, legal, and binding international obligations which we've entered into as a country, and do it with a very clear sense of moral um, orientation, if you like, that we will treat each and every asylum seeker on their own merits, deal with those whose asylum applicants are unfounded quickly, efficiently, and deal with those who, whose asylum applications are warranted fairly and with, with humanity. That has been completely lost and made utterly subservient to short-term domestic political uh, pressures. And, and, and what we've now got after 10 years of uh, the abuse and distortion of the asylum system under, La under New Labour is, in my view, the very worst of both worlds. We have a government which is extraordinarily populist on the issue of asylum, keen only to be able to catch up, if you like, or keep up with the breathless and prejudiced headlines of the Daily Mail and other, other newspapers. So you've got populism on the one hand, and then you've got spectacular administrative incompetence in as much as asylum policy, your treatment of the most vulnerable, your treatment of the most voiceless, your treatment of the most powerless, your treatment of those who are, who are so desperate that they're leaving home, family, community behind to risk everything, life and limb, for a new start elsewhere. In as much as your treatment of that issue shows something about the moral compass of the country and the government, I think it is not unreasonable to conclude that this government has entirely lost its moral compass when it comes to this 
vital acid test of its own humanity, its own ethics, its own sense of, of, of compassion. And that is why I have campaigned for a long time and will continue to do so irrespective, incidentally, of um, the, uh, the outcome of the leadership contest for major changes to our asylum system. I certainly think we need to create a blacklist, for want of a better word, but a list of countries where we do temporarily, across the board, halt any further deportations of asylum seekers whatsoever. It's done in other countries. It makes sense. The, the, the notion that countries which are in a state of total chaos and turmoil, that somehow you can forensically say, well, if you go back to that town, you'll be all right. But somehow if you go to the town uh, 100 miles down the road, you won't. It's absurd. It's an insult to people's intelligence to suggest that you can, you can somehow uh, protect people at arm's length from the other side of the planet from torture, persecution by people who live uh, in countries which are in a state of total turmoil. So I think we need to draw up a list of countries where, if necessary for temporary periods, well, it has to be temporary, for temporary periods of time, we just say we're not going to deport anybody. Secondly, I think we need to follow the Canadian model of making the administration of our asylum system completely independent utterly independent of political interference. I'd like to see all decision-making authority about the asylum system removed from the Home Office. Asylum, as I said earlier, is a process, a procedure, governed in quite precise terms by international law. There's immigration is a totally different matter. Economic immigration, I'm happy to talk about it in the question and answer session, is a totally different matter. That is a legitimate public debate. That is a legitimate issue of public policy. Asylum is, run, is, is, is a system which should be run entirely autonomously of short-term political uh, pressures. In short, I think we need to completely overhaul the asylum system. We have to remove the politics from it. We have to turn a page after 10 years of this relentless drumbeat of populism and administrative incompetence. We need to have the courage to explain to the British people that being fair, firm where necessary, but rooted in a, in, a, in, a, in a humanitarian, liberal tradition which has deep roots in our country, in our attitudes towards asylum seekers, is not, is not tough or indeed soft. It is what I think this country, or it is part of what this country should be. And I think with those, those policy changes, which I hope my party will certainly champion in the years ahead, I hope we will continue to a campaign along with Aegis and with, with all of you together for a more human, fair and liberal asylum system. Thank you.